Welcome to the ninth episode of our special edition MindShift video series. I'm Dimitri Wakov, and the purpose of MindShift is to help you create atomic shifts in your mind so that you live your life with more prosperity, appreciation, and fulfillment. Today, we're going to have the topic of storytelling for success. Actually, this month, the month of July, it will be dedicated to this topic. And we have a little bit of shift of how we're going to make it. This time, we're going to have this panel discussion when our expert, together with me and Laura, we're going to share our ideas and mind shifts on the topic of storytelling for success. I'm super excited about this new adventure we are uh, going towards. And uh, now I'm going to give actually the word to Laura so that she can introduce the subtopic for this week and also our mind shifter and expert today. Thank you, Dimi. So first of all, um, I would like to start with introducing our guest. And uh, today uh, we have with us Svetlana Breu. And it's a big, big pleasure to welcome you to the show, Svetlana. And uh, just a few key words about our guest, because when I saw, you know, everything that Svetlana has done, I said, wow, we'll have a hard time fitting it into a few sentences. But uh, briefly, Svetlana is the founder of Toastmasters Aarhus. And also she is heavily involved in the Toastmasters Olbo. Svetlana was the first member in Denmark to get distinguished Toastmasters appreciation. And besides a lot of work with Toastmasters and beautiful experiences and stories that Svetlana has done and shared, she also has been working with very wide range of different organizations, private and public and non-governmental. And um, she has been leading teams through various changes and growth. And um, the subtopic for, for week one is uh, storytelling, what it is and why it is so impactful. So Svetlana, okay. you, you can, we, can, we can start and then we can catch up with you. So you can start with your idea of that actually, because you are actually, in my opinion, one of the experts which I know who knows that. So let us know what's your opinion on this subtopic. Well, we often hear that it's not a magic that takes you to another world, but it's a story, the storytelling. So why the storytelling? And I'm, I agree with you that the topic is very interesting because we meet stories the whole life from everywhere. Everyone has a story. Some people need to learn to tell them better so others can hear, and another need to learn to listen to stories. But stories are part of the life. And looking back to Steve Jobs, he said the most magical person in the world is a storyteller. I completely agree because it's a narrative that you normally take or design or either to interact or either to instruct or to amuse one. But you have a purpose with this. And when you can make others absorb in your story, when they connect to the memories, when they build their own memories and connections, then the stories have powers. We listen to stories. We develop our stories as well. And this is how, how it goes. Cool. Yeah, for me, I think, um, you know, Svetlana, what, what you said about um, that when someone shares a story, the listeners also connect their own memories to the story they're listening to. And I think for me, a few key words when I think about the storytelling are associations meaning or something meaningful and emotions. Just to elaborate a little bit on, on these three keywords that I relate to is associations. I think that's what makes storytelling so powerful. I think when we try to convey a message, a content through a format of storytelling, this sticks in the memory of others because as people are listening, 
they are creating associations with their own memories to use your words you know with something that you know the story makes them feel and then long time after they might forget you know even who said the story or the details of the story but usually the point of the story you know and the feeling that it left will be really remembered so i think that's what makes it so impactful um meaningful was the other word and i think it's just that if you want to give facts and you do it through a story it just gives meaning to the facts and a different shape you know and then the last one is emotions again i think any hard fact told through a storytelling has a chance to be felt and understood and not only understood no so just I, no. i totally agree with you you know we can of course relate to toastmaster experience but now that takes the current the most obvious example the um, we have a football championship. You know, everybody remembers what happened on June 11th, less than a month ago. And everybody went through the story when, when uh, Christian Eriksen fell down. Of course, you can build up many stories, but if you look um, and we know the result, that the paramedics went quickly and everything is okay, he will leave and probably will continue with a successful football career. You can, of course, tell the story that Danes are one of the best uh, facts, not the story, but the fact that Danes are one of the best in, in uh, providing such a type of assistance. But if you connect to his story, to what happened and what, what, what team became to and how the whole country, how the whole world follows up, then this makes the story more than unforgettable. Then you have an explanation why over the weekend, 2,000 people just enroll themselves to be a helpers in such cases. This is a power of the story. Wow. Absolutely. Absolutely agree. So uh, I was watching this uh, game, so it was really, really very uh, memorable moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I just want to um, add on what you uh, shared, Davis. So the first thing which is coming in mind when we speak about storytelling is that actually we are wired to be impacted by stories because uh, in ancient times, people didn't have anything else in stories, right? When they were in, in the caves and everything, the story was the only thing they could make something out of and people can really relate to each other. So I think we are wired in general for that. And the second thing is that uh, we can relate from our own experience. When we create a story, very often people, we are different, but we are the same at the same time. And we have, Things happen in our life and when someone shares something with us, with a story, we can relate to it and we understand it better for ourselves so we can get really more involved in it. And the third thing which is coming is that in when you create a great story, you combine all senses, you know, you have the visual, you have the sound, you have the feeling, you have even the smell you can get in that. And, and just when you do that, is just so impactful so that you can use it to really move not only people but generation even you know uh, nations i could say with the story with christian erickson is one of the examples i guess so um definitely storytelling can be very impactful so let's go to talk a little bit about the key qualities in which a person who is a great storyteller possesses. So Svetlana, you can give uh, your idea. So what are these qualities? What makes someone really great storyteller? It's, it's, it's a, probably the, one of the most often asked questions. <laughs> and you will find as many opinions as, as many people you ask. If you ask me, I will tell you, first of all, to think of one of the story you remember. Just doesn't matter, it shouldn't be very important, but what do you remember? What do you remember? Why do you remember this? Is it because the person touched your soul? Is it because the person could express himself? Is it because in the right time, right problem addressed, right solution, the plot? Try and think back, why do you remember this story? Well, for me personally, I think there are few qualities which determines 
a good storyteller? First of all, although we say it's a storyteller, I would say this is a person which has to be a good story listener. As you say, you, you hear everything. You have two eyes <laughs> to see, it, you have ears, and your senses also. So the one who listens with everything observes a small detail. This, I would say, is the first one. This is why you get inspiration to your stories. The second one would be the person who can engage or empower. Take with him, with her on a story. Be on this ride. Accept everything which is said. Lose yourself in this story. Don't be, don't have any prejudice how it end or what will be done. Go with and experience this. The third one would be the person who interacts. Because you can tell in this way, another way, adjust to cultural specifics. There are many small tips. And I will be the second and the last one would be the one who is very, very passionate. This has to go through the story. And it doesn't matter if the story is the storyteller is five years old, which the story grows out of him, or the storyteller is 50 years old. So there are many other qualities. And you will find a lot of the literature written who is better and how, and what is well, how to build the story. But I, for me, these are very best points, very basic points, which I will look around because you will never have one story. You will prepare one story at home. You will deliver the second story. And on the way home, you will think about the third version of your story. It's normal. This is how it goes. And instead of waiting for the best story, you know, you just need to start. You don't need to be great to start, but you need to start to become great. So, uh... Well, uh, definitely I was touched by your points because that's true. I mean, it's, you cannot say it one or the other. You just need to be really adaptive and to really in the situation with people, with who you are there, how to deliver this great story to other people. So I, I will talk, uh, my points are connected to actually, um, I, they're connected to um, more about the language and the way people, the person who is storyteller, is uh, using this language and in their voice. Because for me, a great storyteller, first of all, uh, he or she knows how to use words, mm -hmm. how to use words in the proper way so that she or he can impact actually the audience. And that's apps on your point of, depends who is your audience, right? So what kind of words, what kind of expressions they're gonna be connected to. And then of course, to have a clear and concise language that's the second point I see. It should be clear. It should be short. It doesn't have to go too much into, you know, this length, length and things because the people wouldn't understand that. Um, uh, and of course, the tone of voice. So people who use, uh, who knows how to use their voice, even, I'm honestly, I, I, I've seen so many, even if they don't know, and if they don't say the great message, if the tone of voice is good, and if they know how to use the voice, they can impact people. Uh, I've seen that so many times. And of course, the, the last point I have is the pace, you know, the pace they are speaking. Because they have the voice, if they have a good pace, and the pace, of course, which is, again, suitable for the people they're talking to, and words, they, they know how to use the words, I think you can impact uh, almost everyone. Uh, that's, that's how I see it, actually, yeah. I would agree. This is a technique and you can become better at it. You can learn how to do it. Mm. Nobody expects it to you to be, some of course are gifted from, from birth, but you still need to develop this talent. Mm. So yes, it is that there are basic components, words, voice and tone and gestures. And we speak with all three. Yeah. That's actually extremely interesting because I was listening to both of you and the points that I would like to share, you know, half or one part of it is, is very much related to what you said, Svetlana. And the other one is what you said, Dimi. So uh, 
in terms of um let's say let's put it at two things i really 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 love what you said svetlana that a five-year-old can be a storyteller and it made me think about kids i think what makes kids good storytellers is because they don't have limits they don't have you know things you should do they just do what comes they say what comes to their head they don't have norms limitations restrictions and I think to summarize that they just live in the present moment, you know, they just go for it. So um, coming from that story, <laughs> that uh, I think um, it's a person who lives the present moment, both lives the present moment to feel with all his or her senses, everything that's happening throughout the day to get that content for telling a story after, but also lives in the present moment when the person is telling the story, you know. Um, the other side of this point is also that I think every person sh should search a natural style of storytelling. I think to be a good storyteller, you should not copy anyone else. As you said, yes, there are techniques and you should take them as your tools and adjust your own style. But I think a good storyteller is the one that feels natural. You listen to the person and it just feels natural. If it's a salesman, it doesn't sound like a person is selling actually, it's a person is just sharing a story, you know? So basically being fully in the present moment and being natural. And then the other part of what I wanted to share was also clean language and a bit what you said, Dimi, and maybe just to add to that is also the body language, you know, the facial expressions, the pauses, I think it's very, very powerful, especially if someone is a fast speaker like me, you know, da -da 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 -da, and then boom, you stop and everyone's like, ooh, something is coming, you know? So playing with the, with the pauses and with the smile or with like lifting your head or, you know, or putting it down where it's needed, I also believe it really helps to convey a story, yeah. I totally agree with you. I, I have, I'm a proud grandmother of two. And I watch now my almost four years old, the oldest one, making stories, just singing a song. Now she makes up the words. And uh, you are right, they haven't been to a communication courses. They never joined the Toastmaster clubs, but they communicate stories and they are powerful negotiators, I can tell you. It's difficult to not to agree with what they're asking. So because they are, on the mission. They put everything they have, they know, and they can. And this probably should be an advice for the one who wants to start it, to try. Not everybody will succeed from the start. My own story when I came to Denmark and it was my new country back 13 years ago. I haven't spoke the language. I have, I haven't known one person. Well, I had a family a little bit, but I was alone with my daughter and my husband was just Danish consultant. He was traveling and was home every second month, two, three days, which meant, you know, it was on my own. And of course I was eager to get a job. And of course I was eager to meet new friends and start the life because this is what I did my whole life. But I knew also that the way to join people, to, to make, to be heard, was to sh also to share my stories, which I experienced back in Canada because I'm born in Moldova. So I had some travels around the world before I came to Denmark. And my stories helped me to connect to likewise people and get me through, uh, through connections to meeting another wonderful people, hearing stories I would never hear or read somewhere, just because stories also help you build trust. And as soon as you have this trust, then you can share many powerful messages. So moving on to our third subtopic of um, the storytelling for success um, would be practical implications. So this tool of storytelling, let's discuss where can we use this tool in our daily personal and professional life? Do you have some thoughts on, on that, Svetlana? To be honest, I use storytelling in everything at home, with my family, with my friends, and at work, and in my uh, volunteer jobs. I believe storytelling was that push that 
helped me to learn my new country to know when I came. As I said, I was, I was longing for friends. I was longing for a job. But I, I also knew that I need to find the ways to meet more people. And having an experience from Canada, from Toastmasters, finding out that there's only one club in Denmark at that time in 2008 in Copenhagen, which I visited a few times. But you know, commuting from Aarhus to Copenhagen, it takes about three hours one way, three and a half hours back. And it was not the cheapest travel for the meeting. So it was nothing to do else than to try to find possibility to start a club. And I went around in Aarhus to mayor's office, to chamber of commerce, to universities, everywhere I thought people would benefit of the Toastmasters. I've been a Toastmasters in Canada. I've seen the benefits not only for language uh, improvement, but also leadership development. And most important, as a newcomer at that time in Canada, I also build up very quickly my network. So that was my first decision. I went around and I talked about something which was close to me. And as a newcomer, I was lucky to meet many other newcomers, which they could relate to my story. And after some years of perseverance, it worked to start a club. Now there are 14 clubs. I haven't done it alone. I haven't done it with all team and people that have been around. But again, I, I could relate to the story and I still use storytelling. Yeah, well, I think, I think I can relate also a lot with what you say because I also live abroad for 10 years. So <laughs> something I like to say, I think we are just walking stories, you know? <laughs> like, I think um, one of the important things is the way we express ourselves, the way we communicate, the things we say to a person we meet in the elevator, you know, the famous elevator pitch, right? Yeah. It can lead us to like completely different turns in life if we say one story rather than another story, you know? So in terms of pract you know, practicalities, I think it's just generally healthy to reflect once in a while, you know, have a quiet moment and once in a while reflect, you know, what's the story I'm telling to myself? And then what's the story I'm telling to others? Check in, is this actually in line with my dreams, in line with my goals, you know? Like, I just think it's incredible if we are not prepared. Sometimes, you know, people ask, so what are you doing here? And you're like, uh, nothing, I just moved in. Or if you're prepared, you're like, hey, I moved in, I have, plan a plan b my goal is this i'm going you know that direction boom I mean, so yeah something is like i think it's um you can as i said you can use it everywhere at any time and um and it's a good idea to be to be reflective and to be prepared and to adjust your story to the current happenings in your life you know in terms of professional world um coming from a brand management perspective let's say in the business your brand is your story you know, and these days we have so many alternatives for any product. I believe any product really, but sometimes what people buy, why people buy your water, for example, is because they buy into your story of, of your brand, you know? True. So again, professionally, again, I believe every, you know, yes, as a brand manager, that's, that's a top focus, but I guess in, in most of the jobs, you know, you speak to your team to do presentations, there's always stories. And then the third point was also about personal relationships. So for example, both romantic relationships, friendships, raising children, educating them, you know, to explain things, to express yourself, to share your needs, to understand the other, you know, again, I think it's just so much easier to understand and be understood through visualize or expressing your, what, what you have in your heart through telling a story because it helps the other person, as we said in the beginning, right, to relate, to make associations and to understand you better. So, yeah, these, these are the few things and um, that, that I, I had to say. Yeah. I would agree, but I will also add that you need to know your audience, because if you yeah. speak to shareholders meeting, as much as my story is attractive, shareholders are looking at a little bit different indicators, yeah. then I will build up my story differently. 
if I need to share around, you know, the, the wonderful things which happen, for example, with this championship, for example, in football, I can speak to everyone because everyone is watching this. Even mm -hmm. kids are watching this. You can relate to this. And of course, you need to be, as you say, you need to be very aware of your audience, not because um, your message is wrong, but because the efforts you put in developing this message will not be honored. Mm. And many times we build this story, we develop stories. We sometimes have chapters of the same story. You know, if I look back to this 10 years, a decade of leadership development within Toastmasters in Denmark, I started at the club level, but then I went to area level, which is three, four clubs. At that time, when I started, it was Sweden and Denmark. Then I had the responsibility for, for, for Scandinavian countries. I ended up having responsibility for four countries, Scandinavian plus German. And I ended up being number 20 out of 100 districts in the world. So <laughs> yes, that was quite a story. I haven't done it by myself, but there are many chapters in this. And depending on the audience, I will use one of the chapters. Hmm. Do I speak to women, which I want to encourage to follow my way? I will use it in one way I will build the story. If I speak to headquarters at Toastmasters, I will speak in their language because I want to convey my message, which they are interested in. And I think this is one of the important keys to remember when you start to consider who is your audience, what are they looking? Because we learned, especially in last year, time is a very precious resource. Changes are coming. It's not a question of a change. It's a question how many changes coming in one time. So the stories can help you in many things. And that of being strategic in how you develop, who is your source, how you deliver. Because we know uh, there are many methods to deliver. It would be something I would recommend everyone to start considering. But don't be, be afraid of starting. Say something you know close to you personal, because this is most easiest way to, to tell. Yeah, absolutely. I, I would just uh, add uh, my points and I definitely uh, recognize myself in all your points, ladies. So uh, I'm going to come from the coaching perspective. This is my uh, uh, profession. This is what I do. And uh, actually coaching profession is uh, very connected to storytelling, because mm -hmm. what I do is I have a lot of you know, webinars, workshops, even in the coaching sessions, the meat, you could say, with these stories, you know? Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, I realized a lot how in the presentation, when I have presentation in, in webinars, people really connect the most with my stories, how I've been through some hardships and how they can connect to these hardships so that they can build on their life. So this is this definitely is a point which is very important. Uh, I think the time finished when people were like with this um, 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 theoretical uh, webinars and lectures, which you just go with some information. You just, people want stories now. People want to be connected. The other thing is, of course, about the coaching itself is connected with stories. I mean, when we talk with other people, the best way to understand that me is how I convey some story to them and they connect to it in the session. And of course, the biggest story with, I think Laura shared this, is actually we are constantly sharing stories, even though sometimes it's subconsciously, we constantly leave some story. And once we get aware on that, that we are storytellers naturally, and then change the story behind everything, everything changes. And uh, this is something, that's why it's so important to learn because you anyways do it, but why not learning it to do it in the best way? So let's focus now on then on the last topic we have, uh, which is actually how to become a great storyteller. What are tips we have so that someone can start from tomorrow to develop their storytelling abilities? My advice is very simple. <laughs> <laughs> decide that you will engage on a journey okay. of developing a story. Just be brave. Just take the first step. Don't look of the outcome too long, too short. Decide that you will make this step. Of course, you can practice at home. 
there is no no there is no discussion you can of course you know as as normal storytelling you can have a small intro which is summarize some points what will happen establish a time frame maybe some people involved and then go by this plot and a conflict what will happen Christian Erickson fell down you know so many people did so many vaccinations happened or so on and so forth show this conflict show this plot and then build it up as a speech the great way of learning how to build speeches is to join those masters all speeches, doesn't matter how long they are, how important they are, they need to have an intro, the main part, and the conclusion. This you are also introduced in Toastmasters. Why I'm saying about Toastmasters? Because, of course, you can develop your speech and practice yourself staying in front of the mirror and try to be better and try to be better and try to be better. But as your story is focused at someone, you probably need to get the feedback. And why is not getting a feedback from others who listen to you at the same level, who help you to develop this? That is why I found Toastmasters, an organization which is in two years will celebrate 100 years, wow. a, a great place to be. It started in 1924 in US, and now you have more than 16,200 clubs in the whole world. So you find practically clubs in every single country. More than 300, 600 people are members of the Toastmasters. And clubs work very well because there you come. This is a place where you are not afraid and should not be afraid to make a mistake. This is where you get a feedback. And this is where you give a feedback. This is where you get how to improve. Of course, there are many manuals. There are a lot of techniques. The organization is 100 years old. So there is a solid base to join it. But I didn't find up until now a better organization where everyone is welcome. Doesn't matter, even kids. There are also programs for children and for youth. And the only purpose is to become better at speaking and leading. Because I keep saying, you know, you can communicate without leading, but you cannot lead without communicating. And your story can inspire to action. Your story can also inspire to different outcomes, and we know this. So that's, that is how I believe that the development is uh, best to find out how to develop, where it was better. You know, in Denmark, there are 14 clubs now. Back in 2008 was one. In Sofia, in Bulgaria, where you are, Dimitar, there are six clubs now, four of them in Sofia, one in Varna and one in, uh, I believe, in Plovdiv. Oh, yeah. yeah. So clubs are everywhere. The beauty of it, you join one place. I joined in Canada. I moved to Denmark. Now we have members in many of our clubs who move to other countries and they continue the same. So this is probably why that the place where you build up the confidence, you build up the trust and you also learn techniques how to reach to others. That would be my uh, go to toastmasters.org. Find the, it's, it's uh, also open for the public. Find the, a link which says find the club and write a country you are in. Then you find a lot of clubs, like-minded people. Yeah. Definitely, uh, Sudan, I agree with that. I, that's one of my points to go to those masters. This is the best way to, to, in my opinion, to get better in public speaking. If you start now, go there. The second point which I have is a more coaching perspective, get more aware of your own stories you have now and learn how to change them, make them more empowering for yourself. If you learn how to do that with yourself, you can use it everywhere. So that's, that's, that's my second point. And definitely um, I, have, I have two book recommendations which helped me with becoming better. The one is called uh, Made to Stick by the Heat Brothers. It's a great book how to really get more um, aware of how to create a great story. And the other one is, uh, it's called The Art of Seduction by Robert Greene. Uh, it sounds like only, you know, it's not, it's not like only for men and women, how they, you know, uh, how, to, 
how to seduce a woman, but it's in general how actually you can learn to speak in a way so that it impacts people who are around you. So those are some book recommendations I give, and definitely, uh, yeah, that's 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 my point so far. Yeah. There is two very simple things one can do. Yeah. There is a message which is called glove. Yeah. It consists of five letters. G L O V and E. G are for gestures. So watch your gestures, mm. how you speak with eyes, with your, your body. L are for language. Is it clear, concise? Is it cultural? Is it specific? O is for organization, how you build up your story. Do you start with a plot? Do you start with a crying scene? Do you scream on the screen? Whatever you choose, how you end up and develop it. V is a voice. Laura said, and you also mentioned, you, you can, of course, whisper, but you can scream and empower your story. And E, at last, is energy and enthusiasm. Because sometimes, as again, Laura mentioned, kids, they are so much in the story. The energy tells. So this is the first one, glove, G-L-O-V-E. And the second, very simple one. If you just need a tip when you deliver tomorrow a story, think of a story, build it up. Take your mobile phone, record it, then listen without seeing. After that, see without listening, and you will find a lot of ways to improve it and then optimize. Lovely. Yeah, super good practical advice. I love it, actually. Yeah, I, I love it because a lot of times we record ourselves and we just watch it, but we don't think about watching without listening or listening without watching you know that's actually a very very good trick love it yeah well um a few things to add well i think for me i have four very quick points um first was awareness i think it's just about being aware that stories are everywhere you know most of the time we open our mouths you know there is a story or a potential for a story i'm not saying we should only speak in stories but I'm just saying, if needed, there is always an opportunity for telling a story. True. Second was intention. So the question was, you know, how can we become better at storytelling? So I believe it's about setting intention uh, to talk in stories, to tell stories, and then it will be more natural. You know, the ideas will more naturally come. Uh, search your own style is the third one. I have mentioned it briefly before because I really believe that if from tomorrow I want to be a better storyteller, yes, I can get inspiration. And yes, there are lovely models like glove or, you know, recording yourself. So, but besides all of this, I think it's also super important to sit down and think, who am I? What is natural to me? And how can I enhance my strengths? in terms of all the glove mod, you know, parts, right? And if I have some weaknesses or, well, I guess we all do, how can I turn them to my advantage, right? So look at, at myself, get inspiration from, from the external world, but try to work on my own strength and my own style. And that way it will be more natural. And um, the last one was um, maybe a bit more practical, something that works for me. Again, maybe it's a personal thing. But for me, when I have to tell, a, say, a speech or a story or a toast at the anniversary or something bigger, right, I never write the full speech. Never. What I do is I say a speech is for speaking, a bullet points is for preparing. So what I do is I say, okay, my introduction, my conclusion, yes, in between there is a main body part, right? I just say how many points I want to convey, five points, for example. I write them down. I know very well what are my five points and the way I will convey it, as we said, being present, using my natural start uh, style, boom. And as I go through the body part, I just make sure in my head, the only thing that I cover the five points I had. Yes, no. If yes, great. Move on to conclusion. So these are the few things I, um, I wanted to add. Yes. <laughs> but if you are a new one, you are experienced. You are both experienced, but if you're a new one, try to write it down. I found this advice easier for someone who are just at the beginning, who cannot formulate and try to read it. 
the more you read, then you can, the more you remember, then you can improvise because you are good at improvising. You pick up story, you pick up the message and you can develop it. Not all people are so good at the beginning. Not all people have this confidence. They are on the way, but in order to build up this confidence, read it, write it. Then, th then it helps to, to sometimes to put so many different things in that speech. And then of course, I, can, I will admit as well, you know, not always I write my whole speech, bullet points, yeah, but trying and seeing how it works. It is, of course, the way how it goes. You know, I, I, I enjoyed listening to your stories and uh, learning and seeing myself in what you, Dimitar, says and what you relate, Laura, because it's something which connects everyone, at least. I can see why this topic is so important. And everyone, I believe that everyone has a story. It's just, just a point of, of a little bit of effort to make it known to others. Perfect. Thank you so much, Svetlana, for all the wisdom you have shared. Just a final practical thing is in terms of people who would like to contact you for more information, what is the best way to contact you? send me an email that's that's as easy svetlana vreum at gmail.com that is easier way to reach me perfect thank you Wasn't so welcome. thank you very much svetlana we it was there were so many golden nuggets i'm sure people will get on storytelling and uh, yeah have a lovely week and talk to you soon bye